Welcome to Terror at Collinwood. I look forward to getting to today's show about the great Nick D. And this episode features a star-studded lineup of guests. Before we get to the show, I want to let you know that we did record this a few weeks ago. So the information about the pre-order for the great Nick D. Blu-ray was not available at that time, but it is now. It is currently available for pre-order over on Amazon. I will put a link in the show notes. It is just delightful. Head on over to Amazon and pre-order your Blu-ray copy of The Great Nick D. I also want to thank Ansel Farage for doing the editing on this episode. If you check out the video version on YouTube, Ansel added all kinds of great pictures, footage, wonderful things to look at. So check out the YouTube version of this episode if you get a chance. And without further ado, let's get to tonight's episode of Terror at Collinwood. <laughs> I thought you were good. What happened? When life starts getting you down, stop chilling on the beach, stop messing around. You gotta get back to the dreams they had a long time ago. It's time to roll on, so get up and go. Are you Nick Dick? Still don't see him wearing spandex. Welcome to Terror at Collinwood. I am your hostess, Danielle, a.k.a. Penny Dreadful. And oh my goodness, we're going to talk about the sensation that's going to sweep the nation. It is The Great Nick D, the new independent film. Uh, it's amazing. The Great Nick D is a sweet nature tale of redemption that follows a washed up 90s porn star, now a Venice Beach nobody, who gets a second chance to restart his mainstream acting career in order to win back the Oscar-nominated actress girlfriend from his past. Returning to Terror at Collinwood to discuss this exciting new motion picture are its co-director and co-writer Ansel Farage, its co-star, co-writer, and co-director Nathan, Nathan Wilson, who <laughs> plays Nicholas Hatton, a.k.a. Nick Dick. And... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, celebrated writers, actors, and Dark Shadows legends, Catherine Lee Scott and David Selby, who play Helen Zimmerman and Jim Hatton, respectively, and a newcomer to the podcast, but certainly a very familiar face to fans of film, television, and theater. You saw her in films like Edward Scissorhands, Mars Attacks, and many more. She is actress, composer, and theater producer, Olan Jones, who plays Phyllis in The Great Nick D. Welcome to the show, everyone. Hey, hey, hi. It's, hey, I, hey. it's great to have you all here. Uh, David, I had you here uh, back in December and Catherine, we we just chatted uh, just a few weeks ago and it's so good to see you all see you all again and welcome Olan for the first time. Um so you guys have uh, this this movie is just out. It's you're you're playing it in film festivals right now and it's already winning awards and it's no surprise to me because it's amazing i got to see a screener of it and uh you've uh, at the hollywood real independent festival um best film comedy award at one and uh best supporting actress for olan jones so congratulations Yay, there thank Yay. you oh, thank you all yeah. <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> um, <laughs> um so this film um I, I, I want to hear because this is very people who are typically listen to this podcast you know they're 
Dark Shadows fans, of course, and fans of you know spooky stuff, classic horror, fantasy, sci-fi stuff. But this is this is a, a very different animal from some of what uh, you know I've seen you do before, uh, Ansel and Nathan. Um, you know, Todd Tarantula, for example, which is uh, speaking of awards, is up for a Rondo Award uh, yeah. for Best Independent Film. So congrats there, and folks, be sure to vote in the Rondo Awards. Make sure you cast your ballot there for Todd Tarantula. And uh, by the way, Tara Collinwood is also nominated. Hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but um, this is a this is a, a different kind of kind of film here, guys. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, you know what inspired you to, to to do this film? I had I was telling Ansel, it had kind of a big Lebowski kind of a feel to it. I, I was getting from it, uh, but it had a lot of meaning to it, a lot of heart uh, yeah. in this film. So can you can you talk a little bit about it, guys? Yeah. So this character I've had for many years. Uh, probably about 13, 14 years. And I started it at my cousin's theater in Long Beach. And then with through improv and stuff like that, I built the character up mm -hmm. and kind of did a short trailer film a long time ago. And then after that, he's just always been in my head. And I've always talked to Ansel. One of the first films that we worked on, I like showed Ansel this trailer and was telling him about this washed up porn star character that I had. But I never really knew what to do with it. Like we, yeah, we, we talked about maybe doing it as a short film. Like he's, he's trying to find his star on the walk of fame or, yeah, or this little TikTok videos yeah. or a web series. And we kept sort of writing out ideas and, and just discussing it for years and years and years. And then right yeah. after Loon Lake, we're like, let's, let's write this. Yeah. It was during COVID when we were like, well, we got the time. We were writing a couple other scripts. We we're like, let's just finally, like bang out this the Nick Dick script, and uh, Ansel came up with a great title, the Great Nick D, and um, so we wrote the script in like 2020. We went to a couple screenwriting festivals that we got nominated or got sure listed. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Last year around this time or around February, because we were always trying to get money for it, but we could never get money for it, and we were like, let's just do it. Like no one's gonna make it. <laughs> so, uh, so let's just get our money together let's try to figure out how we can make this film and let's just do it yeah. like we and then with our cinematographer robert murphy he was able to get a really good camera and some really good lenses mm -hmm. for the right price for us as well so like it seems like five years ago we probably couldn't yeah. do that but now the it resources just seems like are the now time. available for for independent filmmakers to yep. really like step make up a show their game yeah. yeah and make like a really good product or it, the right price and also at no point when nate was talking about making a movie about this porn star did we ever think we'd get this amazing cast yeah. <laughs> exactly. um, so, uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> it's incredible uh, uh you, know, you talked about the cinematography i mean uh you shot most of it in, in venice beach right yeah. yeah so it's a really beautiful uh scenery on the beach and uh just so gorgeous you know uh just some of those are shot even uh with the pool with the swimming pool where the light is hitting cool. the, the pool a certain way and it's just just gorgeous very mm -hmm. you know uh atmospheric too uh really yeah. cool um yeah. so so um this character you play a Nick D snazzy dresser. Uh, I was, I was looking for my, I, I used to have, wear a lot of animal print back in my rock and roll days, but I, I couldn't find, I couldn't find my animal print tank top. Oh. I would have worn it. I was like, wow, purple pants and uh zebra and leopard. Oh, it's a, what interesting combination there. Uh, so, <laughs> so when I did like a little trailer or short film um, a little while ago, me and my cousin went out that I've had that costume in my closet or in my car for the past like 10 years. Seriously? Just wow. Waiting, just waiting for the day to like do this. Uh, we found it at like a thrift, thrift shop <laughs> and um, that just, it just brought out the character even more. So to be able to sit there and like have that on and brings yeah. out more of, my, of his personality, I guess. So, so this was I, a character you conceived about. in an improv. Like, like yeah. character. <laughs> What's yeah. that, Catherine? I said the costume sounds like a character. <laughs> As the <a> character itself. <laughs> and all the wigs, many, many, oh, many. The yeah, wigs, they, yes. Yeah, yes. So many wigs. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's you were Mer I was selling uh, Ansel, you know, you just became that character. It was like you there was no more Nate. It was Nick D. It was totally amazing. Uh and so this was a character who came up with an improv, you said? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Through through improv. Yeah. yeah. Um and it did just I've been thinking about him for a long time. So I've been thinking about his past. Like we've done yeah. some TikTok videos. Yeah. We've done some other little short things. Nice. So I got 
play around with him. I've been playing with him for, you know, about eight, eight to 10 years. So he's, he's in there. Yeah. He's, he's in here somewhere. Okay. Always, always wanting to get out and it, <laughs> let him loose. <laughs> <laughs> Unleashed Nick D on the world. Awesome. Uh, so uh, let's talk about some of the other characters here. Uh, Catherine, can you tell us a little bit about your character, Helen Zimmerman, uh, in, the, in the film? <laughs> oh, well, she's uh, she owns the agency that uh, that I guess lands Nick D. Um, <laughs> Actually, I, I uh, at the very beginning of my career, I had a, an agent who was sort of a Ruth Zimmerman. So I'm afraid I based a little bit on her, uh, but very reluctantly uh, takes on Nick D, mainly because of her son who finds him on the beach. And uh, and then um, is appalled, is appalled that that this this guy, this washed up porn star is going to be a client of hers. Uh, it's a fun role, but but all of the, the all of the characters in this are just amazing. They're really fun to play. Definitely, the the whole vibe of the film is really fun. The music is fun. Um, it there's a, there are a lot of lighthearted scenes, but there's there's a lot of meaning to it as well. And the whole theme of never giving up on your dreams, uh, you know, I think that's that's a really good message too. Uh, just you know, the older I get, the more difficult that that becomes. You know, so that's a, that's nice to kind of reinforce that and uh in such a, a wonderful way um and uh, just a really artistic presentation too in the, in the film uh and david your character here uh you play uh nick d's father uh in in the play uh, or rather in the film uh jim hatton is his name uh and you had a great scene there with the pinata uh <laughs> I think Ansel advertises to see the Dark Shadows actors as you've never seen them before. <laughs> so, so what did you think of all that, David? Oh, listen, I had a good, I had a good time. You know, I, I like the relationship between the father and the son. And I wanted to uh, explore that, you know. Yeah just what it meant to me, to the father. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just, I don't know, went from there. And, uh, it was just uh, a good time. And the, uh, you know, where I, at the party scene where they ganged up on me and <laughs> <laughs> smothered me and tackled <laughs> me and put me on the ground. <laughs> It definitely looked like you were having fun, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but the whole thing. Yeah. It was, uh, we had a good time. But it was, I don't mean it wasn't work. <laughs> yeah, you've, you, it uh, was work. <laughs> sure. And you you uh, and Catherine, you both worked with Ansel and Nate several times now at this point. And, uh, yes, yes. And that's quite yeah, special. I, I think during Loon Lake, is yeah. when we were talking to David about this script and about this character yeah. that we always thought of him playing the dad uh -huh. of this guy. Um, so that's kind of where we started with Jim. With, with Jim, yeah, yep. We always yeah. kind of were hoping that David would be able to play this this play this character, old now. trucker guy that's now married to an ex stripper and has a great healthy relationship <laughs> <laughs> and a healthy relationship with his son that's yeah. gone off and. <laughs> Had a great time. It's quite a departure from the the roles that we played in Loon Lake. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. yes. Exactly. Yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, totally different. Yeah. Loon Lake is definitely what you you know. I think people who listen to this podcast, the Dark Shadows fans, they see Loon Lake. They're like, oh, that's they expect that. But this is definitely something different yeah. uh, here for, uh, and it's really fun to see. Um, and I want to get to Lisa Richards as well, but first I want to talk to Olan about her character of Phyllis. You played Phyllis, who was a really fun character in, in this, uh, the, sort of the, the Nick D's champion here a bit in this uh, in this film. So what, was this your first time working with, um, with Ansel and Nate? Yes, this is my uh, first time working with Ansel and Nate, and it was uh, it was big fun. As, as I said in my acceptance speech, that <laughs> <laughs> it's like a grown up play date. You know, come and come and play like you're 
thrilled to see this guy beyond measure. So it's that's a fun energy to play with. So I, what else could I say about her? She was a former Rhodes Scholar, a senator for a while, and then she took to the agency. <laughs> no, you were you were tell, so before we started recording uh, when back when Dark Shadows was on. I didn't realize you you were uh, did a, had done a were doing a play with David at that time when you were a teenager. Or? No, we were doing this uh, this play. And uh, it was right when Dark Shadows was was really loud and, and bright everywhere. And so I think I think like girls would drag their dates there kind of thing. And one time when uh, David and I were near the front of the stage, just like, you know, acting up a storm. And I could see right in the front row, this this young couple just making out like crazy. <laughs> Like, you could not interrupt them with anything that we were doing, for sure. <laughs> Good. Was, this was in New York? This was in New York. It was yeah. at the Astor Place. At... Astor Place, yeah. 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 Oh, Len, do you remember Lunchtime Theater? Lunchtime Theater? Yeah, I don't think I... In never London? <laughs> <laughs> I remember it existing. I was like uh, in the in the strange off, 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 off <laughs> Broadway. Yeah, we, were, we were off, off, off Broadway. <laughs> but you, you got lunch, place. you got lunch. Lucky. Down, down. Oh, God. Those were the days of Greenwich Village when you could do that. Yeah. So I think that's also why it's easy for all of us to step into this world of yeah. like playing around and just be this now, okay. You know, I want to say something uh, in general about uh, after I watched the movie that um, there's something great about how it moves from goofy as can be to uh, actually real. And often in these, that attempt is so clunky, but in this one, like the, the directing and the editing, it just took you into the different moods so easily. Like, oh, okay. I'm here and that's fine. I don't know how I got here, but this is good. I'm speaking <laughs> as an audience member. As, a, as an actress, I always knew how I got it. <laughs> and, uh, and the music too, I think uh, really yeah. helped with that too. Who, yeah. who, yeah. who, who did yeah. the music for, for the film? Uh, he's, a, he's a new composer that we hadn't worked with before. His name is Jeffrey Birch and he's based in Oklahoma, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, three weeks to do the score and he wow, yeah, wow. He did an amazing it job it uh, yeah. yeah we found him online and uh we gave him the one of the uh the later scenes where things are falling apart everything's falling apart and, and yeah me and aldo are sitting on the uh lifeguard, lifeguard tower. tower yeah so it's kind of a pretty big scene to to take on and, and he his, nailed it and yeah, killed it his directive was imagine if the beach boys scored a film mm -hmm. oh and great Wow. <laughs> yeah. There is a surfy vibe to it. I really, I, I dig that. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, was were uh, uh, Olin? Have you had you worked with? Have you worked with Catherine before? Have you worked with each other? Or was this no, your first no, time? This is the first time. It was great. Oh. Was <laughs> we met on the set. Oh. We met on the set, and, and she was still. So I, I know I met you. I've met you before, and I, yeah, yeah, years and many many years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Configurations, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Another yeah, it was, it was such a fun day as well when you guys came. Just the dynamic between you two, yeah. Yeah. Cat, they're being very stern, <laughs> and then Phyllis or Olan there just playing around and having yeah. like the best time ever. It was, it was great. It was great I, to I be also, able to play in that. Yeah, space. having having been writing this for years and years and talking about, it, and now here is Phyllis <laughs> yeah. and here is Helen, and he's in the center yeah, of it all. And it's it like is. we get to high see dungeon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you guys um what write the film? Do you do you each you know write a, a scene and send it to the other, and then the other adds a scene, or how how does it work with the two? Bigger and fight and beat each other up, and then we agree on the scene. <laughs> yeah, we we got together um, a lot like yeah. during COVID. There's a coffee shop in Venice that we'd always meet up at. Um, don't say what it is. We don't want yeah, people showing yeah. up there. And then um <laughs> and then we met at some parks with the computer. Yeah. So we kind of had the outline or the base of what we wanted to do. Yeah. And then we would just we, flesh it out and like discuss what 
what are the various emotional beats that we need here and then we what's just gonna talk. happen a lot of it is me and him acting it out to, yep. with each other of like well what about you know what if he says this and then she says that and and then sort of solidifying on okay that's the idea that we need to go with and then and one then, of us will type it yeah. up so, yeah. yeah as and we're then we sent there. it off to some people to read and, and then we'd, we'd get some notes and then we'd add a couple scenes here and there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just together talking about the scene in the outline that we need to like have dialogue for. And then we'll yeah. just start talking. Mm -hmm. And then what if he says this? What if he says this? And then we'll and also with, get into character a little bit. With this case. script, I mean, like Loon Lake, that's a horror film. You know, there's a very particular structure that you have to go with. Todd Trance is the same thing. Um, but with this, because nick himself and all the characters they're they're kind of crazy and spontaneous we had more like leeway of like well what if we just try this as a sequence yeah. and just write it and, and yeah and it's more of like putting what situations can we put nick yeah. in that would be funny and entertaining to watch where he's either the outrageous person in the room or he's the straight man with a bunch of more outrageous yeah, the and things are happening him to him yeah. or is he doing the situation himself so yeah yeah, yeah. That's kind of how that's how the it character is. kind of dictated a lot yeah yeah, yeah. I, I yeah i like the scene with the podcaster where you just <laughs> well, that that scene was <laughs> long that, a poster. That, first, that had <laughs> that's probably like a 10 minute scene yeah. that's long through editing we just front shuck it <laughs> and the scene i mean down. there were funny scenes like that but also those these really meaningful full scenes like the one with you and david you know where you're talking to your dad and uh, it's really, you know, it's really nice. Um, but another really funny uh, character that comes to mind too was uh, Aunt Judy, played by uh, Lisa Richards, uh, another Dark Shadows alum. Oh my goodness, she had me in stitches. That was hysterically funny. She was like demanding that you put suntan o lotion on her back. Yep. Yeah. Was that your first time doing anything with Lisa? No, we we Lisa had worked with me on um, an episode of Theater Fantastique oh, okay. a decade ago, and then she was in The Last Case of August C. Harrison mm -hmm. as Jerry Lacey's wife. That's right. We yeah. worked That's before, the the yeah. yeah, and um, and then uh, with the, Aunt Judy is one of, is probably my favorite character in the script. I mean, when we were writing it, I just yeah be on the floor laughing, and um, and then um, yeah, it's such a fun character to play it. with of like. Just kind of weird in this weird house again a weird situation yeah. to put these guys in to be like what if she comes and then she yeah. and, and she's totally she, like at ease with their shooting what's porn going in the basement on there? And like you know it's like <laughs> she's got her own thing going on and, and again it's it's we get to we get to see all these great actors doing something so not what everybody's used to and yeah and, um yeah it was it was a fun day a long yeah. day but a fun day yeah, yeah. But again, I like them, everybody come to life with all yeah. these great actors that we got to bring into this, like really but, take that yeah. to another level compared to what was on the page. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's amazing to have these amazing yeah, actors and actresses to honored. come in and to do this for us. I want to, um, I want to, uh, I'm glad you brought this up because I want to address the fact that this is, was Lara Parker's final uh, role. Um, and she was, I, I was in tears watching that scene, uh, Wow. Um, can, yeah. can you talk a little bit about um, how that came about casting Lara? And I know you've worked with Lara before, but can can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I knew that she wasn't doing well and I would always email her and, you know, just say, hey, and how, hope you're doing well and stuff. And then Catherine said, is Lara involved? And I said, no, because I figured she's, I knew she wasn't well. And she said, well, no, I think you need to get Lara in here. And by all means, you know, we love Laura. She's she's so damn funny and 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 she's she's lovely. And so um Nate and I talked about, okay, well, if Laura's in here, what what can we really say? Like what what for the benefit of the story and for the benefit of hey, we have Laura in this, what's what can we do? What's well, something substantial we, that she can do and what's something substantial that for the you know, the story that itself, we can have yeah. for the story. So then we landed on she was his old acting teacher. Yeah. And then um basically the scene I wrote was just the this dialogue and it was more kind of rooted in truth of like you know both of us and you know me particularly I grew up watching all of these great people and and getting to work with them and and whatnot so it was kind of just a thank you and so that was the the, the genesis of the scene and Laura really loved it 
because she, as she said, oh, I get to speak like a normal person for once. I don't have to <laughs> say crazy weird dialogue like you always made me say. <laughs> And, uh, I have to say that this had to happen. Yeah. Uh, so you know it had to happen. Uh, Laura and I were in the very first film that uh, you directed with us. Yeah. Um, the very first film uh, with and uh, Jerry Lacey was with us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I uh, I spent the day with Laura and and she was so excited and looking forward to you know, to working on this film. And uh, and it was and, and I promised her that the uh, the dialogue was real. It wasn't Doctor Mabuse or yep. <laughs> Mark kind of dialogue. Uh, and, and I think we kind of beat you up for a while to please write a film like this. And, yeah. uh, so I think it uh, it meant a lot to Laura, and and uh, and now of course it means a lot to all of us that she's in it. So. Yeah, yeah, gotta be a part of it. Yeah, and, and on you know, the, such a lovely scene, it's a beautiful scene to end the movie with. Yeah, it worked yeah. out perfect. And, and something I remember when, on the very first Dr. Mabuse, when I was sitting with Catherine and Laura, and Laura says, do you have lights? With that look in her eye, and I'm like, yeah, 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 I have lights. And I went out and got a bunch of lights that night. And the day that we were shooting with Laura, we now have a crew. We have, you know, sound guy. We have a DP. We had we had lights, and I'm like, Laura, look, we have lights. She goes, I know. <laughs> you know he's he's talking around this, but I'm going to tell you what it was like to do that very first film. Uh, first of all, we filmed it in Ansel's uncle's garage. I think he had to park the Volvo out on the street. He and his mother hung the garage with blue sheets. And it's a tiny little garage. And there's Ansel. He's a one-man band. He's holding, he's, he's holding up a stick with a microphone on it. He's got a camera the size of, you know, like a walnut. And he's doing He's doing the whole thing, and because there was so little room, we were actually walking in circles when we were acting. <laughs> it was one of the funniest things that I've ever done. Again, another reason why Laura just had to be in this. She just had to see. She just had to see how far you've come, Ansel. It's kind of amazing. Thank you. No, it's it's it was. Uh... I mean, I, I wanted to have you guys all always because you guys are family, but to, hey, we're, we're making a real film now. Yeah. And it's, you know, we have all these, we're in locations, you know, we had, we have real sets on this one. Yep. Real and, offices, um, real locations, amazing yeah, cinematographer, so real lighting compared to yeah, the first films that yeah. we were working on were pretty janky, but, but it, but it was great experience. I mean, to do all those with, these great actresses again i gotta learn so much from Catherine and laura and jerry yeah because that was my first ever lead i guess in was dr mabuse mm -hmm. um so i've learned so much i mean that was 10 years ago longer longer than <laughs> longer than that. that like i've learned so much over those years and just being able to to do that and act in those that 10 years, years ago it was 2012 we shot it 2012 was the first one that we shot wow it's been a minute <laughs> time flies I couldn't drink when we did the first movie. I was I was too young. Like that, I I remember the story and tell me if it's not true because you I, you got in touch with me to do the film and I said well, I think I'd like to meet you yeah. and I I met you at a wherever you were doing your casting yeah. and I saw this very attractive middle aged woman sitting next to you and and you'd been doing all the talking and I turned to her and I said are you the producer and she said you might say so I'm his mother. <laughs> And I think that uh, in those days, uh, I think you didn't drive. Uh, she she was also your your driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was a little boy. <laughs> yeah. I was really scared. I remember that day that you came. I was really scared. I was like, oh my god, Kathleen Lee Scott's coming. I have to talk to her now. I have to do this movie. <laughs> and 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 so so that's another. It's like now it's like I I know how to communicate as a director. I know how to to get the job done and i'm at ease now with with yeah well i can't talk right now but like i'm at ease with communicating and you you guys don't scare me except for I, james storm yeah i think you told me once you, you that gerard scared you so <laughs> great too because the first time me and Catherine acted in the garage together as, 
what uh moman i guess yeah. and then the witch and then now we're going at it in this movie and, and she's like sitting on the other side is <laughs> yeah that's i mean that's that's one as, as and, the agent, and then i'm on the other side and she's like yelling at me yeah this is so mean, scary using <laughs> using this, this repertoire cast that i'm so lucky to have and to to bring everybody back time and time again in different incarnations and roles yeah there's a we did a movie again like uh, back in 2012 it was a, the rising light it's a sci-fi film i it it's a very it's, it's, experimental it, yeah. movie that we, we, we learned a lot on that one yeah. and but Catherine and Nate played mother and son even though they're like aliens and so I'm, we're, we're I filming I haven't seen that one it's, 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 it's quite a movie but um I remember we're doing a scene on Nick D where like they're yelling at each other it's a very intense dramatic scene and I'm like yeah at one point they played mother and son now they hate each other like this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, had you met Ansel before you did that first film? Had you met um, uh, David and Catherine at the Dark Shadows festivals, or was that later that you started attending those? Uh, no, I had not met anybody. Oh, okay, that one. I I met. I remember there was the screening of the Tim Burton Dark Shadows film and House of Dark Shadows at the Vista Theater, and Jerry Lacey and I had already been in communication about playing Dr. Mabuza. I see. Okay. And I there was the line of everybody was, you know, getting autographs and I went up to him and said, Hi Mr. Lacey, I'm Ansel. And he <laughs> looks at me and goes, Oh, hi, nice to meet you finally. And so <laughs> yeah, I, I hadn't met anybody. I hadn't been to the I hadn't been immersed in Dark Shadows world um, you know, outside of seeing the movies and the show. But um so yeah, it was very surreal, very trippy yeah. when all of a sudden, you know, Catherine and Laura and Jerry are at my dining room table and I made Nate do a British accent at our first table read yeah. and like everything was, you know, it was, it was, it was yeah. So it was, it's very nice coming back to what Catherine said. It's very nice to now be at that professional level of filmmaking and to bring everybody back and be like, Hey, look with through your help and encouragement, you know, Hey, I, I kind of, I'm still broke, but up. I did it, you know, like yeah. we're here. So now you yeah. do know what you're doing and you're you're terrific to work with. So uh yeah. you've learned a lot in these 12 years, but uh it's been an it's been a lot of fun, I have oh. to say. And I love it that you worked with David. I know you'll agree with me. I mean, how wonderful that you know you you worked with Johnny Carlin and yeah. Chris Pennock yeah. and you know. Um, I think we've sort of become our your repertory company yes, of have. players, and now Olan, you're you're, <laughs> you're yeah. going to prove. Welcome in. Yeah. Thank you. Did, do we get like badges or t-shirts or something? <laughs> I, I, second I, film, you get a you get a t-shirt and a badge. There you go. There you go, <laughs> David. What did you think of uh, you know the contrast between the last couple of films that you uh, did with uh, Ansel and Nate and this one? Any any thoughts on that? Well, we had uh, what I guess a little more to work with in mm -hmm. terms of you know uh, crew and I don't know camera, all the you know all, all the equipment and uh, uh, it was. But you know, they each one has been very for me very special. Uh, I, you know, I just uh, and I've always thought, okay, what's next? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. that's been that's been a, the lovely thing because everyone is always open, you know, for a new idea. Yeah. You know. Yeah when we I were driving to, to set that day we haven't even started shooting our scenes yet and david's already like all right well what are, what are we doing next what, what's the next film and i'm like uh, <laughs> what, how about we go shoot this first before we start <laughs> the other day i was thinking about it because i was like i love how david's always thinking what's next because now that's what we're thinking about i'm like all right well we did this i can't believe we did this this is amazing that we actually made this but it's like all right well what is next but it always is amazing when you finish something, even when we were working off 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 Broadway <laughs> or wherever <laughs> downtown, you know. And I I can remember working in the back of a bar uh, downtown, uh, Olan, and uh, 
that was the the refrigerator was our prop box. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds crazy, but it was wonderful. <laughs> and when we finished again, somebody said, "Hey, you know, there's this play. You you might want to think you you know we'd like to send get see if we can get you a script and get me a script." Then I said, uh, "Yeah." Uh, <laughs> Do you have it with you? <laughs> uh, so that was always, you know, it was always a, I don't know, this whole business has been a gift to me. Yeah. From all of Can you I, all. The other that, that I think is, is really, uh, speaking of gifts, uh, you know, Ansel was just starting out 12 years ago and now he's already mentoring somebody else. You know, young Josh Price. Oh, I have to say, Ansel, I I really appreciate that. You know, you're already giving another young filmmakers, uh, screenwriter, uh, yeah. boost and and, him and so on. That's wonderful. And and everything that I say to him is what you and Laura used to yell at me about. <laughs> like, okay, but the dialogue here, you gotta <laughs> and. and uh, and it's just yeah because I never went to film school I I, I was <laughs> taught so everything I learned I learned on the job in the moment and so yeah I, I've learned so much from Catherine yeah. from Laura, from David from Jerry from Chris um you know and uh, so I'm I'm just lucky I'm very lucky and and so to um you know pass that uh pass that help on because I didn't have any help nobody helped me I had to, to do this myself until I got to to got the opportunity to work with you guys and then you guys certainly have helped yeah. but that initial like life rafts you know it's important to cast that out to the give back to to everybody else that's trying because it's such a brutal as is as everybody here on this this zoom call can attest this is a brutal ruthless industry <laughs> and very unforgiving so where you can find help and and find good people yeah. you you know that's important. So, right. Yeah. Um, are, uh, where can people see this now? Are, you're doing screenings right now at film festivals, right? And then I assume you're planning for a, a release, a streaming release, or a home video release of some kind. So. Yeah, we're, we're having a home video release, uh, Blu ray DVD in June. Yep. Yeah. You have it. You get also, you'll have special features. You'll get to see, you know, the scenes, scenes that we cut. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, commentaries and things yeah. like that. So, and you're supporting independent film. Yes. Great. Uh, you're right, though. It, you don't really see uh, these types of comedy films much anymore. Uh, it really is like very focused on the superhero action type films right now. Um, it, this reminded me, like I said, like Bill, Big Lebowski or like Chasing Amy or something, that it had that kind of feel. It was a comedy, but it was also really meaningful uh, as well. Uh, so uh, I, I have a very good feeling about this film. I think you guys are going to do fantastic with this i really really do and um so this is blu-rays coming out this summer and that's going to be available through is it through amazon or hollandsworth productions website uh, or yeah i mean you, wherever you can buy it yeah. blu-rays or dvds online yeah okay. just search, great, nick search great nick d and it, you'll be able to find it yeah okay and are there any screenings coming up we are waiting to we're waiting hear to back. hear back from a couple other festivals um hopefully we get into a couple more and then and then we'll see and then we'll yeah, yeah see Okay, fantastic, great. Okay, um, and there's also, I want to also touch on this, on uh, this summer, there's the Dark Shadows Remembrance event coming up. Uh, so I, and I see that, uh, I, I hope, I hope to see all of you there. I'm hoping to make it out to, uh, to uh, Burbank. And I, I got a really nice email from your mom, uh, Ansel. It was a very yeah. sweet message I got from your mom. Uh, and I, I really uh, hope I can make it. <laughs> it was so sweet. I was like, oh my God, Ansel's mom sent me an email. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really look forward to, uh, to, to, uh, attending that. That is, this is a celebration of life for Laura Parker and Jonathan Fred centenary the next day. So are, are you all, are you all going to be there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Be there. And I, you know, that's the other thing. I, I'm glad you brought that up too, because, um, both Ansel and, and uh, Nathan have the most amazing parents. I, I don't know how, you know, they <laughs> supportive uh they're ju they're just wonderful and i think that's um uh, that's a big boon that's where your luck comes in that's oh uh, uh, yeah that yeah i always 
talking about our parents. I always think back when we shot Loon Lake because yes. my mom, dad, and a lot of the we're we're in the movie for the beheading scene <laughs> with <laughs> David and Catherine leading everybody down before we chopped <laughs> Kelly's <laughs> head off <laughs> or the wood <laughs> head off. So like, but they had so much fun and everybody there had so much fun and like just having everybody at their house and my mom was cooking for that film and kind of feeding everybody. She was craft services. Yeah. She helped out a lot. They were in the movie. Like my dad yeah. was helping out when a driving scene, he was like pushing the back of the truck to make us look like we were going down the road. <laughs> and I remember my brother and his wife, uh, extras in the film. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was just really fun. I grew up on a farm in Minnesota. It was just so much fun going in the garage and and uh, uh, and getting into that. They didn't have machinery like that when I was a kid. Yeah, on a, a big tractors. What's that? What is that big machine called? The combine, it, maybe. A harvester combiner. Yeah, combine. Yep. Baylor. You no, know, it was a combine. Yep. Combine. Corn and the beans. Yeah. <laughs> And I think it's a family of four. I'm talking about something just a minute. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Olin, are you are we gonna see you in the next uh in the next one, I hope, in the next film? Uh yeah, I'm just gonna barge in no matter what. Awesome. Good. <laughs> Good. 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 The parents I, I can't wait to be invited. Yeah. <laughs> No, it would be, I mean, I, well, it was, yeah. And to get Olan in this was fantastic. Cause like we were, it's a crazy film how we filmed it. Cause we, we started we, in May. No, and then we started in April. April, And yeah. then I had to wait a month. Cause then I need, we shot the flashback scenes. Then I had to wait a month to grow out like some facial hair and a mustache. <laughs> and then, so we were casting and getting the locations we would, yeah. as we were filming. Yeah. So and it we was were like, a, who's going to get Phyllis? So we're trying to cast Phyllis. And then luckily, yeah, because I, I had seen yeah. I had seen David and Olan do a delicate balance at the Odyssey Theater in L.A. And, <laughs> and it were... just screamed wacky age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depressing Edward Albee just, you know, oh, that's a great comedy. Um, but but it was a great night of theater. And and so then I met Olan after the show and um, uh, and uh, we just kind of stayed in touch on Facebook and then as as yeah we, we leapfrogged this film so we would shoot like a, a day or two here and then we would prep for the next thing and we were casting uh, all through into September yep. it was a very long shoot um, and scouting and all this stuff yep. so when we knew okay the, the agency sequences are coming up you know I knew that Catherine was going to be Helen and we're like okay well who's going to be her foil like who's going to yeah. who's going to you know be Phyllis and oh my god Olan you know, yeah. I wanted to have Olan in a film, yeah. and you know, and then, he, then he hit me up. He's like, "Oh my god, we have what to get... if I got Olan Jones?" Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "Hit her up, see what she's doing, see if she would do it. Send her the script, do whatever you can." So, and very and fortunate. Just, just like you know, with the Dark Shadows cast, you know, having grown up watching Dark Shadows, and that's such a you know integral part of of my cinematic DNA. You know, Olan, I, and one thing I, I remember when we first talked on Zoom about the movie, I said, you know, Mars attacks. It's like a perennial <laughs> favorite in my yes. family. And so her she's got a great line when the aliens invade. She goes, Well, they ain't getting the TV. And like we always we always <laughs> that line at home. And so it was cool to words like, to live by. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, I don't know, it just it works out. Things, things life is funny, yeah. you know. Life is yeah. and then the same because to like pitch this movie to people, it's like it's not about uh, porn, it's not but about it's a porn. porn star. It's a washed up porn star <laughs> living in Venice Beach, but it has nothing to do with porn. We tap on it as lightly as possible, but it's more about the character and about this person. So to like send the script out and be like, well, let's see if she likes yeah. it or see if these <laughs> they like it and want to do it. So and Laura, going back to Laura for a minute, when we were doing Dr. Mabuza one, Nate. I remember he showed Laura the footage of, of him as Nick Dick riding around on the scooter in mm -hmm. Venice Beach. And she was like, oh, you have to do something with this. Yeah. So then it was also, it was a great, again, full circle of like, hey, Laura, so remember that character that Nate showed you? And we've been talking about forever. And uh, we're, we're doing it. We're actually yeah. doing it. And, and then she was giving you notes when we were shooting. Yeah. Too. Well, yeah, the day <laughs> was she, yeah. that we shot, we were in her room and she was getting ready. Uh -huh. and we were her lines and everything. And she's like, you know, I just think like if you had a little more drive um, in this movie for for the character and something else. And I was like, well, we've already shot like half 
it's a little late to go back now, but we do have that now. We do have that piece that's in there. There is a driving force um, with, yeah. with Faye and everything. It's in there, so don't worry about it. Because again, but, Laura and Catherine were always like, Ansel, script, the script, the script, the script. Yeah. So, it, you know, and Laura being the writer, well, what about this? Is What's the central conflict? What's, yeah, so, yeah, so. Which was great. Until the end. It's been a wonderful, wonderful voyage. And, <laughs> and, trip. and now it's on to the next. I look forward to the oh, next that's film. Right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much again for uh, joining me. This was really fun. Uh, it was great hearing about what it went into the making of this film, uh, the great Nick D. And uh, absolutely, folks, keep your eyes out for it. If you can attend a screening, please do so. You will definitely not be disappointed. And when the Blu-ray comes out, I will absolutely announce it here. Thank you to all of you for joining me today. Olin Jones, David Selvey, Catherine Lee Scott, Nate, and Ansel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. <laughs> Terror at Collinwood is a Penny Dreadful production.